test. Um, but I'm just going to sketch it out, okay? So it's not going to be showing you the actual test. It's just really specifically what you're going to be doing on the test. So the first question is going to be really easy. The first question, and this is for both 7th and 8th grade, is you'll be given a grid like this with directions right here. And then what you're going to do is look at the bulletin board and you're going to list the first need of organisms, second need, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and you can use the bulletin board. So that one should be pretty straightforward. So that one's going to be worth six points. Then the second thing you're going to be doing is I'm going to give seventh grade one mammal and eighth grade another mammal and then you are going to identify how that mammal gets its seven needs met. Sound straightforward? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So that'll take care of the first part of the test. Second part of the test is I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six different scenarios. And the scenarios are going to have to do with first, second, and third worlds, okay? So if I say something like um, our second car just broke down and it needs a new transmission, you would say that's a first world problem because in second world they don't have second cars and in third worlds they don't have cars. So I'll give you scenarios like that and you just have to identify whether you would find that scenario in the first, second, or third world. Um, so another one might be, um, I've had no water to drink today um, except for the water out of um, um, a mud hole. And would that be first, second, or third world? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you guys had two experiments. So seventh grade, you had the Emoto rice and eighth grade had color theory. Seventh grade, your task is going to be to come up with three reasons that was not the greatest experience. Experiment, sorry. And eighth grade, you're going to come up with two. Okay? So eighth graders will come up with two reasons that the color theory experiment was not good science. And seventh graders will come up with three reasons why the Emoto Rice experiment is not a good example of science. Next, same uh, idea, seventh grade. You need to be familiar with um, the guinea worm story. Okay, so watch the video online if you need that. So be familiar with the guinea worm, and you'll be given four statements. You have to choose the one that's not true. So three of the statements will be true, one will be not true. Eighth grade, you're going to have to know the story of cobalt and the DRC. Okay, same thing, I'll give you four statements, three of them will be true, one of them will be false, you have to identify the false one. So that won't be worth just a few points. Next section is going to be a true and false section, and that's going to be on both tests, both seventh and eighth grade tests, true and false. And the true and false questions are going to deal with what science is, and what science is not, okay? And those are the University of Berkeley links that you can find on Edmodo. So just be familiar with those points. You can also go to the classroom website and pull up my lesson plans and you can actually see a bullet list of what science is and what science is not. So those are just going to be true false. Next section 
is going to be the scientific method. And what I've done, um, actually I'm going to show you this, this will be easier. What I've done is I've taken the steps of the scientific method and put them out of order. And then your job is just going to be to put them in numbered order. Okay? Um, even though the scientific method seldom, you know, when you do science, it seldom goes in this order, um, there is a logical sequence, and that's what I want you to use. I want you to put it in a logical sequence. And then the last section, this is going to be a little bit more involved, so I'll take a few minutes with this. Um, this is going to be kind of an essay section. It's going to be a short essay. And it's going to have to do with dysentery or diarrhea and sewage. Okay? So the first thing, and it's outlined for you, so when you get your paper, when you get your test, it's going to look just like this. It's going to have an outline, and as long as you go right down this outline, you'll get all the points. Now there are extra points involved here because if you add up the points, it equals, I believe, 11 or 12. So if you do everything well, you have a chance at getting some extra points here. And that's true, there's a couple different sections of each test too where that's true. So the first thing you're going to do is your topic sentence, which is going to be to identify the disease or illness, which is the second killer of children worldwide. Okay, which I just gave you the answer to that. What is the cure? Discuss how sewage is handled differently in first, second, and third world countries that kind of leads to children and adults getting this disease, dysentery. And then the last two are briefly identify how those of us in first world countries can help those in underdeveloped countries avoid exposure to sewage. And then the last thing is how we might bring health care to these people. Okay? So it's very straightforward. As long as you address these one, two, three, four, five things, um, you'll do fine. And I'm looking for maybe, maybe eight to ten sentences is all. I'm giving you two pages. Uh, this is the front, and then the back will have lines like this. Um, but for the most part, you're not going to need two pages to do that. Okay? Are there any questions I can answer right now? So does that give you a decent overview? Okay, so I'm going to shut the video. There are the seven needs of organisms, the three worlds. There will be a true fault section on, um, on what science is and the myths of science, and it'll be very straightforward, true and false. There will be a section where I give you a mammal. Seventh grade will have one mammal, eighth grade will have another mammal, and you have to identify how those two mammals get their needs met. Um, the other section is uh, eighth grade will need to know about cobalt mining in the DRC. Um, so know that story, you'll be given four statements. One of them will not be true, you have to identify the not true one. Seventh grade will be given uh, their scenario, which is um, um, uh, the guinea one and the work of the Carter Foundation. So I'm saying that just so our seventh grade friends who watch this will, will hear that. Um, two things I want you to know, okay? Um, just to clarify, that might throw you for a little bit of a loop. Number four is coped, okay? Number four is coped. Don't forget, when we talk about coped as a need, we're not simply talking about a coat or a jacket that you put on as a human being. We're talking about things that give immediate protection from the elements. So it's kind of like an analogy. So a coat or a jacket for our protection is analogous to, for example, uh, the leathery wings of a grasshopper or beetle might be a coat. Um, a, more, uh, a better example would be um, a dog or a cat, their coat would be their fur, okay? Uh, you have seed coats, you have the bark of a tree, anything that is kind of protecting the organisms from the immediate elements outside of the organism, that's what is meant by coat. Uh, and then the other one is number seven, which is uh, belonging for human beings. It's the importance of belonging to a group, of belonging to each other. For simpler organisms, 
um, the idea of belonging is simply to find a mate. So if I give you an organism for you to describe its needs, and it's a very individualistic organism, in other words, it's an organism that really lives most of its life on its own, that organism for number seven, for belonging and value, really, that organism still has to find a mate. It still has to come into contact with another of its species in order to reproduce. So if I said, um, what is belonging for a human being? You could talk about all the different social groups you're a part of. If I'm talking about what does belonging mean for a, uh, for a rattlesnake? You could say, basically, the only time a rattlesnake really wants to be with another rattlesnake is if it finds a warm place, so for warmth, um, or, if it or if it needs to uh, find a mate, if it's ready to mate, okay? So it can be, some of those have different meanings. Uh, number five, in terms of health care, um, again, some organisms, it's really difficult to come up with, like, what is health care? What do these organisms do when they're sick? Um, however, some organisms do know, so try to think about what organisms might do if they're sick. Um, what organisms might do uh, if they're sick, okay? Um, Cass, did you have a question? Yes, yeah, so what about single-celled organisms? They don't need to find someone else to reproduce. Good, that's a good point, yeah. Single-celled organisms do not have to find a way to reproduce because they reproduce asexually. So when you're dealing with single-celled organisms, they're really one of the organisms that really don't fit this model really well. So that's a good question. Um, you know, single cell organisms um, don't necessarily uh, get sick. I mean, they do have a coat. I mean, they do have a cell wall, okay? Both plant cells and animals have cell walls. That would be the equivalent of the coat, okay? Any other questions about the test? Anything else? Yeah. Friday. Yep. And I have another review session on Thursday if you want to come and ask questions. So if, if the stuff that I just shared or the stuff that shows up on the YouTube video is a bit confusing to you still, see me on Thursday during Deal, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I won't be videotaping on Thursday. Thursday will be more just coming in and um, clarifying anything and, and making sure you're ready for the test.